So we need to scare as many children as possible, okay? I can already visualize all the kids being afraid. Mom, what does this mean? <laughs> maybe that's evil, I don't know. Um, maybe that's morally incorrect, but it is pretty funny. You know what I've always found so interesting in games? Whenever they like do something that like breaks the fourth wall kind of, you know? Like for example, a game where like when you pause uh, while fighting some time-related boss, the boss is like, no, you can't pause and then like unpauses your game. You, you see how these things just make games so much more interesting. And as someone who, you know, not really develops games, but as someone who just enjoys coding in Roblox, and obviously that means I work on games sometimes, uh, I found that really, really interesting. And I just wondered, what could I do that sort of mimics that? Like, what feature could I add that almost breaks the fourth wall in a way? And immediately what came to mind was the kick message, right? I just looked up kick message, I don't know what Skyflow is, but it doesn't matter, right? You were kicked from this experience. I'm sure some of us have gotten a message that looks something like this. Maybe you weren't kicked, but maybe your like internet was out, or maybe someone hacked you and this showed up, it doesn't matter, right? But point is, imagine this message, but fake. Like, imagine making a message, right? Like, okay, first of all, we can make a fake kick message. Like, the player isn't actually kicked. They're still in the game. But we could do something like that, right? And then you could start making messages which, like, your account was logged on from an unauthorized device. Please change your password now. Like, imagine making a message that's fake to just scare the player. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be fun? And another uh, cool thing as well, in case you didn't see the tab, is uh, I found this guy's code, which basically is supposed to, like, get the country that the player is in so i think we also could include that in the kick message as well so okay look with that being said okay we need to identify the main elements of the kick message okay and from what i can see it's just a gray box with a you know white button with these rounded corners it has bolded white text here unbolded gray text here and also a line that separates them and also another thing you might notice is that the background is blurry so all we really need is just a square box, a rounded button, a line, two pieces of text, and a blurry background. So honestly, let's do exactly that, right? To make the actual box, we would need to use user interface, right? That probably makes sense. I'll just call this kick GUI. We would then also need the box, so I'll do frame, and then I'll just call this, I don't know, box or something. As for the color, um, I'm honestly not sure. I mean, what color do we think the kick message is? Uh, I mean, that looks fairly similar, right? And then if I just scale the size to make it fit across all screens, make it like this. Yeah, I mean, that looks like a fairly legit kick message. We would also then need the button, right? So I'd say a text button. I'll scale that as well. Okay, so after a bit of adjusting, I've added the corners. I've made the text, uh, you know, padded and everything, meaning that it's, you know, at the right size. Now, because we actually don't really want the button to do anything, at least not right now, maybe I'll get some idea later. Um, I'll just leave this completely blank. This will be finished. We don't need to script it or anything. This is fine. And the next thing we need is just, you know, the text, uh, the line, and the other text. And I'm thinking I'll just quickly add those and then just cut to whenever I'm done. Okay. Hello everyone. I think this looks honestly perfect. Account login detected from an unauthorized device. Roblox will forcibly log you out from the current session. To reconnect, please log off the unauthorized device. That just... I mean, okay, sure, mine looks a little different, I guess, but this is pretty cool, right? Like, I kind of tried not scaring the player that much, because then it just looks fake, but then I wanted to give that little fear, like, what do you mean account login detected? You know? Like, I don't know, I think that actually is perfect, honestly. Maybe the text could be a little bit brighter. Sure, yeah, like that. But yeah, that aside, I think that that's perfect. And the very last thing that we need here is just to add a blur effect. And I think that, is that it? Or should the size be a bit better? Maybe, maybe like this. Yeah, perfect. I'll just call this kick blur. And so now all we need to do is just script this into the game, right? So what I'll do is I'll disable the kick blur. I will disable the, um, I'll disable the kick GUI like so, right? So right now we don't have any of those things. And what I'll do is I'll go to starter player script. I'll make a local script and I'll make variables for both, right? So local blur is equal to game, uh, lighting, wait for child, kick blur. And then also local kick GUI is going to be equal to game, 
players, local player, player GUI, wait for child, kick GUI. And to be completely honest, and to be completely honest, I'm not even too sure where we would like enable this. So what I'm thinking we can do, okay, is we can make a um, remote event, okay? And what this thing does is it, uh, in short, just allows the game to communicate with the player and vice versa. So I'm thinking like, you know, as the game is running, maybe the game is like, oh, the player was in this server for like 10 minutes, maybe for fun, we could send out this fake kick message, right? So what I'll do is I'll say game, uh, replicated storage remote event on client event. So meaning when it, meaning once the server actually sends us something, then we're gonna connect, we're gonna make a function. And this function will simply be to enable the blur and also enable the kick GUI. And so then inside of a server script, what we could do is we could just say like, um, I don't know, whenever a player joins the game, so game players player added connect function and it will get the player. We could honestly like wait like 10 seconds and then we could say uh, game replicated storage uh, remote event fire client player. And yeah, I mean, let's play the game and let's just pretend we're just playing the game, casually walking around, just absolutely nothing's wrong, having fun. And then after 10 seconds, like that's pretty cool, right? I can already visualize all the kids being afraid. Mom, what does this mean? <laughs> this is so fun, bro. Honestly, this would make for like a perfect um like horror game, you know? Like I you know those horror games that like don't look like horror games, but then like there's like a jump scare. Oh no. I think this would be cool, you know? Like I don't know, like disconnected, unauthorized login or something. And then the player and then everything goes dark. And then the player is suddenly like teleported to like some dark room and uh, apparently like there was a break-in to their house or like something like that. Like, I don't know. I, wouldn't that be cool? Another thing actually that I do want to uh, fix is the fact that the player can actually like move. Because I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of the fact that the player is actually moving around, right? I don't really like that. Because in a real game, if you actually were to get kicked, um, so let, let me show you right now, right? Right now I'm just running around, I'm all fine. If I were to actually kick myself, so game players, local player, kick, right? Or what am I saying? Kick, there we go. I can't actually move. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting my keys right now. It's not letting me move. So then I think what we should do, if we still want to keep the player in the actual game, inside of the local script, and I'll be honest, I'm not even too sure how well this will work. We can loop through every single item inside of the game. So for IV in workspace, get descendants. So workspace contains everything like that's visible. So every character, every part, every effect, all of that. And we can say if V, which is the item we're looping through, is an actual part, right? Because obviously we don't we don't want to affect like the camera or whatever. Um, and we also don't want to affect terrain because terrain is a base part for some reason. So we need to ensure and not V is a terrain. So meaning if V is a part and it's not a terrain, then we're going to say V dot anchored is equal to true, meaning V is now unable to be moved, okay? V will now stay locked in place. The reason I'm a bit skeptical about this is because this is a local script, so I'm not too sure if like some, I don't know, it, it should let me, but let's see, let's see what happens. And the 10 seconds should be up and let's see. Oh, perfect, yeah, look at that. I'm completely frozen. And on this server, I'm actually really interested. You see me over here, right? Am I still able to move? Like if I go forward, Okay, no, I'm not moving. That's actually pretty cool. And I would imagine that other players would also look anchored. Although I can't be too sure, obviously, because we don't have any other players. But, I mean, look at this. Account login detected from an unauthorized device, Roblox will... Ah, that is so cool. Now, okay, to add to the charm of the video. You know, it's clear that our goal is now obvious. We need to scare as many children as possible, okay? Or even, even adults, right? Like, because honestly, this this is kind of weird. Like, this looks fairly realistic. So, I, right now, have an absolute master plan. Do you remember how I said earlier that we might need to use this code to get the player's, like, country? Well, what I'm thinking we can do, right, is... I'm just gonna copy this real quick. And then inside of the server script, I'll put this up here. And they already have a player's function, so I'll just copy this code, delete this, and then put this over here. And so what this is going to do, right, is, is it going to say, okay, if success and code, then print countries code. Okay, so we don't need to print this, okay? What I want to do is I want to create a variable. So I'll say local 
player country and then we're going to set it equal to be nothing okay and then i'm going to say player country is going to be equal to uh what did they say it was like countries code I'm pretty sure that this is what they did. I'm just a bit like confused with this code because they are using like some website that I, obviously I don't know what, what website this is, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly how they did this. So they got the player's location code and then they turned that into the name of the country. And so then when we're firing to the player, I will also include this bit of information. So I'll say player country. So not only are we gonna be firing to the player, we're gonna be giving it this piece of information as well. Now this could be nothing, like if this doesn't work out, if it's not successful for some reason, then this will just be equal to nothing. So instead of the local script, right, we need to ensure that this piece of information that we're gonna get, which I'll also call player country, we need to ensure that it's not nothing before we actually do what we want to do with it. And so what I'm thinking we can do just for a little bit of fun, okay? We can let the player read the message so we can give them like six seconds to read everything, okay? And what I'll do is I'll just quickly say uh, if player country is equal to nil, meaning nothing, then we're just going to return end, meaning we're just not going to do anything, okay? But if we do have the player's country, then let's scare the player a little bit. Now, inside of the GUI, I'm pretty sure text2 is the one that is the description. Yeah, it is. So text2 is the thing that I want to change. So I'm just very casually going to, you know, get the kick GUI. Um, I will get the box. So I'll say dots box dots uh, text2. And then we're going to set the text of that equal to I see. Like, this is always scary to see, right? We'll let this stay here for about, let's say, 0. point five seconds and then we're gonna change the text again but this time you live in and then we're going to connect this piece of text to the player country player country so you live in america or canada or whatever now again because it's a country it's a lot less scary like if i told you like hey you live in i don't know vladivostok in russia does it like whatever you'd be a lot more scared you'd be like what the hell how does this guy know but if i say you live in russia that's a lot less threatening so you know obviously roblox is terrible for not letting me access the exact location of every player but we just have to work with what we got and i'm thinking right after this we could just make another gui so i'll just say screen gui and then after this i'm thinking we could just make another gui which i'll just call black gui we're gonna ignore gui inset meaning that it's gonna cover the entire screen and I'll just make a frame here that, like I said, is going to cover the entire screen. And this frame will be uh, black, like so. And we'll set the display order to be uh, 1 as well. So it's always going to be on top of the kick GUI. And so I'll disable this. But what I think we could do, right, is uh, I'll just make a variable for that as well. So black GUI, like so. And we're going to let the player, you know, read the fact that we know everything about them. And then three seconds later, we're going to say, okay, and I'll just <laughs> rename this to black GUI. We're going to set the black GUI enabled equal to true. So if I play the game right now, okay? Yeah, okay, we have to wait 10 seconds, whatever. TikTok brain, bro, get that out of your head, okay? Let's let's chill for a bit. But 10, sec 10 seconds are up now, and... Okay, uh, something is wrong. 10 seconds are up, but nothing is happening. That's not good. Okay, so I just bug tested a bit, and I uh, just changed nothing, and apparently it worked fine. So I guess it was just a, a one-time issue, so that's fine, okay? Uh, I reduced the time to be 5 seconds. I know I just ta talked about TikTok brain, but... Look, okay, 10 seconds is a pretty long time, okay? If I play the game right now, after 5 seconds, it should hopefully work. Yes. Okay, so we read this. Like, what do you mean unauthorized device? And then... That's that's cool. Bro. Oh, man. That is so fun. Maybe we can set this to be like 1 second. Isn't that just so cool? Like, I know what this is, and even, even that kind of spooked me a bit. Like, obviously, I'm not... I know that this isn't real, but like this, this is pretty cool. I see you. You live in Canada. And then it just goes black completely. And it also kind of like shows your reflection as well. That's so fun. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like if you are a game developer, please include this in your game. This is probably the funniest thing I think I've ever coded, honestly. No, because, okay, look, like really think about this. Imagine some child-friendly simulator game where kids are playing... And then imagine you're like a developer there. Hopefully, hopefully you're someone like that. Like hopefully you're someone who's working for like a huge game. Would it not be so funny to just implement this system and just make it like a very tiny chance 
to run, like to to make people like be affected by this. Like, a, like honestly, like a 0.02% chance, right? Like that's a very low amount, right? But then like some poor kid is gonna be, get unlucky or lucky, I guess, and get that on their screen and start like crying or something. Maybe that's evil. I don't know. Um, maybe that's morally incorrect, but it is pretty funny. I will say that if you were uh, incredibly impressed with what I just done here, like if you're like, this is literally game changing, like every single game needs this. I know, I agree, I'm amazing. I will tell you as well that because I'm so amazing, I do have a uh, a course, guys, haha. <laughs> Not to be a sellout, but I do have one. It's like, what, $40? Link is in the description and the pinned comment, so check it out. It's actually pretty cool. All the reviews say that like it's literally amazing, life-changing, perfect. Like, they, like literally no bad review at all. They all love it, absolutely. Or actually, no, there are bad reviews, but they're like stupid, so I, I, I don't count them, you know? But yeah, like I said, this probably was the funniest thing I've done. Uh, I was thinking of making this into like an actual playable game, but honestly I do have a lot of like ideas soon to make a couple like better playable games. Like this is kind of boring, like you, you log in, it tells you your country and then it just black screens you. Like that's kind of a boring game, right? If you do want to make this yourself, consider this video a tutorial, um, because you know that's because, you know, I've basically done all the code myself, except for, I guess, the country stuff, but that doesn't matter. Check out the course, join the Discord, um, leave a comment that isn't about edging or whatever, and as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.